The final NFL game of the season is just hours away with Super Bowl 58 between the 49ers and the Chiefs. And I want to end the season off with one Super Bowl same game parlay. It's got six legs and comes in at plus 190 odds. So let's get into it and let's start with the Chiefs on the alternate spread. Now, I think whoever was the underdog in this game would have been great to take as on a teaser or in an alternate spread market. In this case, it's the Chiefs being short underdogs. So let's bump them all the way up to plus 14 and a half. But you could do any number that you like. Now, getting Mahomes as an underdog at any number is always a good bet. In fact, he's 10 1 1 ATS. Yes, and nine and three straight up as a dog in his career, and in the playoffs he's fourteen and three straight up with just three losses: two to Tom Brady, one to Joe Burrow. So you're telling me I can add a whole bunch of points here and make the Chiefs a big underdog? That's something that I want to do in this same game parlay. Kansas City has six losses this season, and only one of those has come by more than eight points, and it happened in Denver with Mahomes dealing with the flu. The 49ers have won by just three points in both playoff games. They also found themselves down by seven points in the third quarter versus the Packers and 17 points at halftime to the Lions. So while I could certainly see a scenario where San Fran wins, I think anybody can win this game. I don't think it'll be by double digits. So let's go Chiefs plus 14 and a half. Next up, I'm taking an alternate total as well here and we're going under 60.5. I also think under 47.5, the normal number could be a good bet as well. But for same game parlay, we can take what we want. Let's go under 60.5. Historical Super Bowl trends show over-under has gone an equal 28 and 28 all time. But the under is on a current 4-1 and one run. Kansas City has the most unders in the NFL this season at 14-6, and six, while also cashing the under in five of their past six games. San Francisco has been more of an over-team this season, but they are just 2-2 two and two in their last four. The last year's Super Bowl was a shootout, with the Chiefs winning 38-35. to 35. That had 73 points. But previous Super Bowls of late totaled 43, 40, 51, 16, 74, 62, 34, 52, and 51 points if you look at the last 10. So if you look at that current uh, total at 47 and a half. The under would have gone four and six, but if we were to bump this all the way up on an alternate number, say 60.5, we're suddenly looking at seven and three to the under to that number. Now, neither of these teams play at an overly fast pace of play either. The 49ers average 60.7 plays per game. That's 26th. The Chiefs average 63.8. That's 14th. Kansas City's offense lacks big play threats. They do a lot of short passes to Rice, Kelsey, even Pacheco out of the backfield. And for four, the 49ers, their biggest weapon is obviously Christian McCaffrey. This all lines up for a slower, methodical, lower scoring game. So we'll go under. Next up, both teams to score field goals. Kind of sticking with this slower, methodical pace. I think both teams have very capable offenses, but good defenses as well. So I see this as a tight game with both teams bringing in impressive defensive units. The Chiefs were second in points per game allowed, second in yards per game allowed during the regular season, while the 49ers were third in points per game allowed and eighth in yards per game allowed. Both have good enough offenses, though, to still move the ball. I still see some of those drives stalling out, and Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan deciding to go for some safe plays and kicking the field goal. There should be no weather concerns either here as we're playing indoors, so there definitely will be no concerns. So neither coach should be worried about that and shouldn't worry about trying to go for a field goal or even a long field goal. Now, if we look on the Chiefs side of the kicking spectrum, we have Harrison Butker. He was 33 of 35 in field goals and 38 of 38 in extra points during the regular season. In the playoffs, he's been spotless, 7 for 7 in both, about as perfect as any season that a kicker could have. Now, only one game did Butker not attempt a field goal, and in the games where he did attempt at least make one at least attempt at least one kick. He only failed to have at least one completed field goal one time. Finally, he's completed six field goals of 50 or more yards, including one for as long as 60 yards. He's basically good from anywhere. The Chiefs will surely use him in, in this game. 49ers rookie place kicker Jake Moody. Maybe he hasn't quite uh, been as perfect as Bucker, but he still has had a solid season, being 21 of 25 from field goals and 60 of 61 with extra points in the regular season. You know, he has missed uh, two of five field goals in the playoffs, but he is 7-7 seven and seven in extra points. But there were four games where the 49ers didn't attempt a kick this season, but in the games where Moody did attempt a kick, he had at least one field goal in 14 of 15 games. His longest kick on the year was 57 yards, and he's 3 of 5 from 50 or more yards this season. So he, too, should definitely be used in this game. We'll go both teams to kick at least one field goal. Now let's move in to some player props, and we're going to go Isaiah Pacheco, 50 or more rushing yards for the Chiefs, Pacheco ended the regular season with touchdowns in four straight games, with four rushing and one receiving in that time. He's continued that run in the playoffs with a touchdown on the ground in all three games, meaning he's now found the end zone in seven straight games. 
Chiefs have just seven total touchdowns during the playoffs in their three games, and they've all come from the three guys that they look to the most. Pacheco with three, Travis Kelsey with three, and Rasheed Rice with one. In the NFC title game, both David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs had a rushing score for the Lions against the 49ers. And the Chiefs, if the Chiefs will have success on Sunday, surely Pacheco will be involved. So Pacheco is obviously a good touchdown option, but for the purposes of this SGP, let's look at the yards and we'll just ask him to get 50 or more rushing yards. That's something he's done in eight of his past nine games, as well in 13 of 17 games this season. And in those last nine games, he's averaged 81.5 yards per game. And the lead back, if you look at opposing rushers against the Niners lately, the top back against San Fran has passed 50 or more yards in each of the past three games. So let's go Pacheco, 50 or more rushing yards. Let's go to another running back for the next leg here. And it's McCaffrey, CMC, 75 or more rushing and receiving yards. McCaffrey's found the end zone in all six career playoff games, as well as in 33, of 37 career games as a Niner. He's rushed for two touchdowns in each playoff game this season as well. So CMC as an anytime touchdown score or even a first touchdown score at better odds certainly is always an option. The guy's a touchdown scoring machine, but let's look at his yards as well. If you just look at rushing yards alone, he's gone over 75 yards in nine of his past 10 games. If you throw in receiving yards, he has a combined total of 132, 128, 91, 131, 187, 153, 133, 139, 103, and 142 in those last 10 games. Season long, he's at 75 or more rushing and receiving yards in 17 of 18 games. So truthfully, asking him to just get 75 here is probably lowballing it, but we can pick any number we want and play it safe in this same game parlay. Finally, you could just leave it at that, but if you want to bump it up just a little bit more, I'm going to ask Noah Gray to just make one pass, one catch in this game. There's only a limited amount of reliable targets for Patrick Mahomes to choose from on the Chiefs' side. You can be sure the 49ers will be doing their best to try to lock down Kelsey and Rice on passing plays. Somebody else is just simply going to have to emerge. He has to throw the ball to somebody else. So why not Noah Gray, the backup tight end behind Travis Kelsey? He had five targets last week, but only caught two for eight yards. He's also seen at least three passes in five of his most his recent six games, and also in 11 of nine overall this season. So it's not like he never gets used. He usually does see at least a few passes his way. His receiving total for this game has creeped up to 13.5 yards. That's a number he's surpassed versus the Bills in the playoffs. He had 16, as well as the Dolphins, where he had 20, and also in 10 other games during the regular season. So you certainly could look at Noah Gray as one of those under-the-radar overs in prop bets as well from a yards perspective. But let's also look at the 49ers against tight ends this season. They gave up 105 yards to the Lions tight ends last week. Now, granted, most of those yards went to the starting tight end, Sam Laporta, who had 97. However, backup tight end Anthony Ferkshire did have eight yards. Obviously, that would be under that total. But if we look at backup tight ends collectively against the 49ers in recent weeks, we can find some more trends. If we look at the last 10 games, in six of them, a backup tight end has gone over 13.5 yards. And in another game, that tight end landed right on 13 yards, all right around that total for Gray in receiving yards. In fact, in one game versus the Cardinals, two backup tight ends went over that number. So you could certainly attack Gray to go over his receiving yards, or you could simply ask him to just make one catch, as that's something he's done in 17 of 19 games this season. And as discussed, he's been getting a few looks every week. So let's just round this out with Gray to get one catch. That comes in at plus 190 odds. That's my Super Bowl same game parlay here. What's your best SGP for this game? Be sure to leave it in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more sports picks throughout the rest of the year. And good luck with all of your Super Bowl picks.